Previously, I had discussed factoring and the FOIL method. Today, I'll be discussing solving polynomials. Let's start with an example. x squared minus x minus 12 equals 0. Let's solve for x and the x values. So first, let's factor this. I had previously made a video on factoring. It is useful to watch that as well, in addition to this. I had used a cross method, which I had found incredibly helpful. It involves um, taking the factors of this side, of this term, and this term, and putting them on either sides of a cross. In this case, you can factor out 12 as 6 and 2, and it's a negative 12, so one of these will be negative. And the assuming that these are whole numbers that we will achieve at the end, um, 1 and 1 on this side, because 1 times 1 is 1 and 6 times 2 is 12. Um, but there are more possibilities. Um, 1 and 12, and also 4 and 3, because 4 times 3 makes 12. Let's experiment with these. Let's see, 6 times 1 across. So the, the rule of this was to add the products. But now one of them has to be subtracted. So it's um, 6 times 1 is 6, and 2 times 1 is 2. And if you add or subtract these products, because so there might be a minus sign here, or there might be a minus sign here, on account of it being negative 12. Um, so this doesn't work, because 6 minus 2 is equal to 4, and minus 6 plus 2 is equal to negative 4. So this is out. This one, um, 12 times 1 is 12 and 1. So 12 minus 1 is equal to 11, and negative 12 plus 1 is equal to negative 11. So that doesn't work either, because we're trying to achieve a negative 1 here. Let's try this one. Mm, 4 times 1 is 4, and 3 times 1 is 3. 4 minus 3 is equal to 1, but we want a negative 1, so minus 4 plus 3 is equal to negative 1, which does give us the coefficient in front of this term, this x term here, negative 1. So this works, and that tells us that the 4 has to have a negative sign in front of it, as shown by this. So now we can read this across. x minus 4 times x plus 3 equals 0. Now we can solve this as two separate equations, taking x minus 4 is equal to 0 and x plus 3 is equal to 0. We will achieve two different solutions, or two roots. Roots um, are the solutions to this expression above. So x, if you add 4 now to both sides, x is equal to 4. If you take a 3 to the other side, the x equal to minus 3. So the two solutions to this are the solution set is 4 minus 3. Let's try another example. 3x squared plus 21x plus 30 is equal to 0. Let's again use the cross method. 30 can be achieved with 1 and 30. But now we can see right off the bat that it can't be an O oh, and 1 and 3 on this side. But we can see right off the bat that it can't be, th 3 can't be here because that would make a 90. And 90 plus or minus 1 won't be anywhere near to 21. Even here, if you add now um, 30 plus 3, which is the pro. Um, the sum of the two products of this cross. This will give 33. So doesn't that doesn't work either. And both of these has to be positive, so this is the only option in this case, unlike the problem we did above. So let's try something else. How about 6 times 5? And um, 1 and 3. Well, this is 18 plus 5 
which is equal to 23, which is still not 21, but how about if we move the 3 somewhere else, like here? Now if we multiply here, it'll be 15, and multiply here plus 6, that does equal 21, which is the coefficient in front of this. So now, if we read across again, it'll be 3x plus 6 times x plus 5 is equal to 0. Again, we can solve as two different separate equations, 3x plus 6 equal to 0, which would mean 3x equal to minus 6, and x is equal to minus 2. And the other solution will be x plus 5 is equal to 0, and x is equal to minus 5. So the solution set for this will be x is equal to minus 2 and minus 5. Now, let's discuss the graphs of these polynomials. Let's look at the graph of the first uh, example that we did. The first example was x squared minus x minus 12. Um, this, when factored, we got y is equal to x minus 4 x plus 3. Now, you can also achieve the same solutions that we did here by graphing. So, if we had graphed these, we would see that the graph intersects, or the graph e, um, has a value of 0 at 4 and negative 3, which are the two values that we got. So actually, if we graph this, it would look something like this. It would um, go through here at um, negative 3, comma 0, go down here somewhere, come back up at 4, comma 0. And that would be the graph. And it'll actually go through the x-axis. Now here we should talk about multiplicity. Multiplicity. This, um, the multiplicity here for both of these is odd. What do I mean by this? Well, the exponent and on the top of each of the expressions is 1, and 1 can be considered an odd number, and it will, therefore, it'll go through. However, if we had the equation y is equal to, um, let's say, x minus 2 cubed x minus 5 squared, um, the roots of this would be, as you can see, um, x equal to 2 and x equal to 5. These are the two points, this would equal 0. If we were to graph this, we would see that it would go th through the x-axis at x is equal to 2, but it would only touch at x is equal to 5. Because here, the exponent is even, so it has an even multiplicity. Multiplicity is the amount of times the same root is um, can be solved for. So if you actually write this out, um, this would actually be, let me write this here, um, x minus 2, x minus 2, it'll be x minus 2 three times because it's cubed, and x minus 5 twice, like that, because that's squared and that equals 0. So you actually get 2 as an answer three times and you get 5 as an answer twice. And this, you get 5 two times and 2 is an even number while 3 is an odd number. And if it's an odd number, if this exponent here is an odd number, it goes through at that point, and if it's an even number, it only touches. So the graph of this actually looks something like, um, well, it touches at 5, right? And it goes through at 2. So that is actually what the graph ends up looking like.